Black Magic GH5S. Black Magic. I'm gonna go with the GH5S. So tomorrow I am going to be leaving on a flight to go to Toronto, Canada for a gig. And I'm super excited to do that because I've never been to Toronto before. And for this job in particular, gonna be doing it by myself. So that means I'm in charge of all my own audio, all my own lighting, my own camera. That means that I have to pack really, really light. And I thought it would be cool to just show you guys how I pack my gear for travel. So I'm gonna be going with the GH5S on this gig because this is a much more small and lightweight camera. This is a DSLR size camera and when you're shooting by yourself, it's really, really easy to use. And as you can tell, um, compared to the Blackmagic, this thing is heavy and in order for it to be really fully functional, you have to rig it out with like a V-mount and monitor and this and that and honestly it just becomes too heavy and also um, I could be wrong but I'm not 100% sure if I can bring these V-mounts onto a flight. And then also the batteries that the main camera batteries that you use with it, they're not really, they don't have a lot of power to it so it's not really something that's going to make it very efficient for me. Since this is more of a cinema camera and I'm going to be doing a job that's solo, um, using a cinema camera on a solo kind of shoot all it's really gonna do is slow you down because there's so many pieces that go onto this camera in order to make it work it just gets so bulky and heavy and then the, the data rate is so high that it's like you're gonna have to switch out cards more frequently you're gonna have to carry something that's a lot more heavy and it's just something that is not really worth doing um, when you're just literally doing everything by yourself so having something like this where to me the quality is pretty similar to the black magic you can get really good quality and you have something really small and compact it just makes it much more easier to do a travel solo kind of gig ah, okay and then along with the GH5S, I'm going to be bringing my Sigma 18 to 35 and then my Sigma 50 to 100 just so I can have my full range of focal lengths and then also the 14 to 24 that I'm currently using on the 90D. One of the things that I really, really love about this camera is this Metabones speed booster right here. And the reason why I love this speed booster, the 0.71, is because this is a micro four thirds camera, which basically means that your your lens is going to be cropping in by about two. On this camera, it's like at 1.8, I believe. And then if you were to use this Metabones adapter, it does a focal reduction, which basically means it takes away the crop that the Micro Four Thirds sensor does. So essentially the 0.71 makes it so that the GH5S being a Micro Four Thirds actually becomes a full frame. It's not 100% a full frame, but it gets it as close as possible to what it actually is. So even even though I'm using crop sensor lenses like this 18 to 35 and the 50 to 100, what I actually get with that Metabone speed booster is pretty equivalent to what the numbers actually are on the lens. So a little hack for full frame on a micro four thirds. Also using Pelican cases while traveling is horrible and I don't recommend it. I would recommend getting something like a low pro backpack. I used to use this all the time before I got Pelican cases. And then once I got Pelican cases and I don't always have to be traveling everywhere, it's a lot easier using Pelican cases when you're shooting locally. But when you're traveling around, using something like a backpack is much much easier. It has pretty much all of the room that I would need to bring pretty much all of the bare essentials. ND filters, external battery for my phone, memory cards, always make sure you bring extra. My small HD monitor. Since I'm going to be shooting interviews, I'm going to be bringing some lavalier mics. I'm going to be bringing uh, two extra packs. If you have more than one microphone and more of one of these cables, I would highly recommend bringing them. Earlier last year in 2020, I had flown out to Myanmar. This this was right when the pandemic was pretty much starting, and but it hadn't left Asia yet. And one of the issues that I ran into is that one of my microphones was actually getting a lot of interference and I couldn't really figure out why. But it was to the point where pretty much any audio that was being recorded would be completely useless. And then I ended up finding out that it was because of one of these cables that ended up being busted. So I luckily had brought maybe about three of these. So that really saved my ass because if I hadn't brought extra 
extra ones, then I would have been screwed because we're in a third world country where literally nothing is easily accessible. So whenever you're traveling, definitely bring extras of different cables and cards and anything that's pretty much like really cheap items like this. Okay, so so far it looks like I'm taking GH5S, H5N, external battery, memory cards, Sigma lenses, CT crunch, ND filter, small HD monitor, lavalier mics, aperture F7, a Milky Way, teleprompter, and the DJI RS2. So everything that I packed into this bag right now is just camera, lenses, and audio. And these are the things that I'm gonna be bringing in with me as my personal item. The next things that I'm gonna be packing, which I'm actually gonna put into my luggage is going to be my RS2 teleprompter and my NAND lights. So I'm gonna be packing those things into my luggage and I'm gonna be checking it in instead of carrying it on. And the reason for that is because these items are technically non-essential things. Like worst case scenario, if something were to happen to the luggage, I still have the camera and the audio on my backpack as my carry-on item. The shoot can actually happen without those two things, where the shoot can still happen even if I don't have a teleprompter or the lights or the Ronin. So I'm carrying the most essential items of the shoot on with me. That way it's in my sight at all times and I know that nothing's gonna be happening to it versus the luggage. You can't really know what's gonna happen to it. Like TSA people, they'll go through your luggage, they'll steal shit and they may end up stealing something important, which is unfortunate, but at times it does happen. I would not pack my camera with my check-in items because if someone were to rummage through my luggage and end up taking that, then I'm basically flying there for nothing. It's basically just a way to secure the shoot and make sure that it happens at all costs. If for whatever reason, something were to happen with the rest of the gear and with the rest of the luggage that's in this bag, I can live without luggage and I can kind of live and I can still work even if I don't have these items. So that's just something that I do to have a peace of mind while I'm traveling. There's actually one story that I know of from a DP that I know who had a camera bag that he checked in and then when he flew back home, it turns out that his check-in bag, his camera bag that had thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment ended up going to another state and then he had to go through all this trouble just to get it back and I personally do not want to go through that stress so all of the most important uh, gear that I'm going to be bringing onto the shoe I bring it on as a carry-on item little packing hack I'm going to be doing the ranger roll to pack up my clothes and what this does is it just makes it so your clothes are taking up as little space as possible. So I'm gonna fold the bottom part of my jacket like so and then I'm going to kind of fold it into a third. This long sleeve part, bring it right here, fold that part up a bit. Do the same thing right here and then from the other side I'm going to Tighten it as much as possible. This is probably not going to be the best jacket to do it on, but yeah, yeah, there we go. Kind of works. Okay, so now I'm pretty much done rolling up my clothes. And as you can see here, when I do the Ranger roll, um, I pretty much just roll up my clothes into a little bundle like this, nice and tight. Just maximize the space of this bag a lot more. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread the clothes out a little bit, just because I'm gonna be bringing a teleprompter with me and that's gonna be made of glass. So I wanna just have some sort of cushioning to go along with everything that's packed in here, just to protect it as much as possible. All right, so now that I'm done packing, I've managed to pretty much put everything into three separate bags. I have the backpack, a rolling case, and my tripod case. My tripod case, I normally just put on top of the roller rolling case, and then I'll usually have that as like a second check-in item. That's pretty much it for the most part. I do have a light stand that's coming in the mail. Uh, hopefully it comes today. It's supposed to come today, and that's supposed to be something that fits inside of my luggage bag. Another thing that I would recommend, depending on the country that you're going to, is 
one of these guys. The plugs th that are in that country are going to be a little bit different. So this thing is meant to convert the power of whatever socket you end up using um, into whatever plugs that you plan on using. In my case, it's US. So there's like these little adapter pieces, like um, this one's kind of similar to the US one, except it's more angled. Here's the two round ones, which I believe they use in like Asia and Europe. And then we have one where it's just very girthy little plugs right here. Um, in my case, since I'm going to Canada, I'm not actually going to need this, but I'm going to bring it anyway because it could also be used as a power strip. It also has some USB chargers too. All right, so that's all for the video today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found something useful, and I hope that I could have made your next travel shoot a lot easier. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like and subscribe and comment. That way you can see more filmmaking related content from me. And as always, have an amazing day, and I'll see you guys later. Can't wait.